I may be an idiot. Sometimes, as an instructor, you have a very clear concept of something in your brain, but you, you can't vocalize it, you can't get it out in class, and that's very frustrating. It's frustrating for me, but of course it's very frustrating for you as a student, because you have to understand this material. So I've been thinking about this plus, s, minus, ml, that kind of stuff, which I think may have confused some people in class. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about it, and I think, I think I've now boiled it down in such a way that I hope it's going to be clearer. So I'm going to try. Let me know if this makes things clearer. Historical background. What is all this? A way to think about processing color. There were two theories, trichromatic opponent processes. Trichromatic theories stated something along the lines, I'm really simplifying, something along the lines of you must have three types of cones, three types of receptors in your eyes and based on what pattern they're activated in, you see certain colors. They were right. Those receptors are the cones and that was established neuroscientifically. Okay, it was a little harder to establish opponent processes neuroscientifically because basically what that states is certain colors just work in opposing ways, right? Think about you look at something red, then you look at the wall, you see that same thing, but now in green. Why is it green? Trichromatic theory can't explain that. But what's the neuroscience behind it? Well, that took a little bit of time to figure out, because you can study things behaviorally, like we did in hue cancellation, right? Like what we talked about. So if you, you start with red, you add green, add green, add green, until you don't see red anymore. Okay, but again, how does it work in there? Well, starts on the retina. Remember, photoreceptors, rods and cones, but now I'm talking about color vision, rods out the window, cones projected bipolar cells which project a, project a ganglion cell. So you have a cluster of cones that project to a bipolar cell then to a ganglion cell. Now to keep things really simple, let's, let's cut out the bipolar cells, just, just in our minds, just to make things simple. Okay, so I have a number of photoreceptors which project to a ganglion cell. Turns out that you have four types of mechanisms like that, okay? Four types of mechanisms. And those were part of the evidence for that opponent process theory. And here's how they work. Look at it this way. Ganglion cells fire action potentials at a continuous rate. But they can increase their action potentials and they can decrease that spontaneous discharge rate. Okay, here's how these mechanisms work. The first one is called plus S minus M and L. Forget about that plus sign. Treat it as an AND, okay? Plus S minus M and L. How does that circuit respond to light? Very simply. If it is, you have me short, sorry, short, medium, long wavelength cones, they're poorly drawn. It's just the diagram, right? Short, medium, long, blue, green, and red, just to keep things simple. If this circuit, the receptive field of this retinal ganglion cell, the receptive field made up by a bunch of cones, right? If it gets stimulated by short wavelength light, the retinal ganglion cell gets excited, increases its uh, rate of action potentials. If this circuit gets hit by medium or long wavelength light, the system reduces its action potentials. The ganglion cell reduces the number of action potentials it discharges relative to the spontaneous discharge rate. That was all. That was all I was trying to say, but I was overcomplicating it in my mind, and as a result, the way it came out. This system is the opposite of that. Plus S, minus M and L, plus M and L, minus S. Forget about... Sure, it's, it's a different score. Sure, it's a different signal. Yeah, 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 your brain loves different signals, but you can simplify it much more than that in your brain. This system gets excited by short wavelengths, inhibited by medium wavelengths. This system gets inhibited, that's what that bar means, by short wavelengths, minus s, and excited by medium and long wavelengths. So, short wavelengths, action potentials from the ganglion cell go down, medium and long wavelengths, action potentials go up. Done. It's that simple. Now there are two more circuits which cut out short wavelength cones altogether. You only have medium and long, medium and long wavelength cones. This is plus L minus M. Guess what? 
If it gets hit by long wavelength light, the ganglion cell increases its action potential rate. If it gets hit, uh, sorry, if this system uh, gets hit by medium wavelength light, right, minus m, it decreases its action potential rate. If it gets hit by long wavelength light, plus l, it increases its action potential rate. And this circuit is the exact opposite once again. Medium wavelength light plus m excites the retinal ganglion cell, it increases action potential rate, and long wavelength light decreases, inhibits the ganglion cell, and it decreases its action potential rate. It's that simple. Now that's on the retina. Remember, multiple ganglion cells as receptive fields form the receptive field of one lateral geniculate nucleus cell, you find similar processes, similar circuits on, in the lateral geniculate nucleus, and multiple lateral geniculate nucleus receptive fields form the receptive field of one cortical cell. Receptive field you could consider to be the view on the world. What part of the world do these photoreceptors see and they project to ganglion cells? Those ganglion cells project to LGN cells. The LGN cells project to the cortical cells. Now, what about the cortex? Well, the cortex and the cortex it works a little differently. At least in monkeys we know that you have two types of opponent neurons. In other words, more evidence for that opponent process theory. Early on in vision, trichromatic, and then later on in vision, opponent processes. Single opponent neurons, double opponent neurons, and they work like this. These neurons have receptive fields, right? made up of the receptor fields of lateral geniculate nucleus neurons, made up of the receptor fields of ganglion, retinal ganglion cells, right? It's like a staggered process. But in the most simple form, remember the on-center off-surround and the off-center on-surround receptor fields from lateral, uh, sorry, from retinal genic, uh, sorry, <laughs> from retinal ganglion cells. You remember that, right? Shine a light in its center, you get excitation, shine light in its surround, you get inhibition, on, center, off, surround, for example. This is very similar. This is a plus L minus M single opponent neuron. In a nutshell, you stimulate this neuron with an increase in uh, long wavelength light, and it starts to fire more action potentials. Red light here, red light here, and you get excitation. Now you may find that a little weird. Doesn't it say minus M? Yeah, but it's a uniform receptive field. So anywhere this gets hit by long wavelength light, it's a plus. Excitation, more action potentials. Anywhere it gets hit by medium wavelength light, minus M, fewer action potentials. Red anywhere, more, green anywhere, down. That's a real simplification. Could also be flipped. Could be minus L plus M. Well, then it would revert, right? If this would be minus L, then long wavelength light anywhere would lead to fewer action potentials. Medium wavelength plus M anywhere would lead to more action potentials. Single opponent. Slightly more complicated is the double opponent uh, neuron. These are often uh, uh, drawn as more squarish receptive fields, but in any case, just to stay a little bit in the same style, I've drawn two scenarios. Here we have a plus L minus M, plus M minus L cell. Does it have both? Yeah, look at the name, double opponent process, right? Double opponent process, so you can have a plus L minus M. Now, what do you get in such a case? Well, think about it. If I have a plus L minus M double opponent neuron, then if I get long wavelength light in the center, or sorry, medium wavelength light in the surround, you get more action potentials. And in the other half, I flipped it. So if I get medium wavelength light in the center and long 
wavelength light in the surround. I do this because I cut it in half, but long wavelength light in the surround, I get few reaction potentials. Surround minus L, center plus L, right? It's a double opponent uh, neuron. And all this together is evidence for that opponent process theory. And this is probably what I should have said in class. I hope this makes things clearer. Please let me know if this clarified matters, because it, I, I like to know if this explanation makes more sense. That's it. I hope this was useful, and good luck studying for the test.